Imagine a quiet night in the middle of nowhere. The sky is a vast velvet blanket scattered with a billion glittering diamonds. You are listening. Listening not with your ears, but with something far more powerful. A giant radio telescope, its great dish tilted towards the heavens, is straining to catch the faintest whisper from the cosmos. For years this mechanical ear has listened to the symphony of space. It has heard the steady hum of distant pulsars and the crackle of ancient galaxies. It has recorded the mundane, the predictable, the natural sounds of a universe going about its business. But on one particular night, everything changes. Something completely unexpected arrives. For just 72 seconds, the telescope picks up a signal unlike anything ever heard before. It is a powerful narrow beam of radio waves traveling across unimaginable distances. This is not the familiar static of the cosmos. This is not the random noise from a dying star. This is something different. The signal is so strong, so startling, that the astronomer who discovers it scribbles a single word on the printout. Wow! That one word would echo through the halls of science for decades to come, a testament to the sheer astonishment of that moment. This is the story of the WOW signal. It is one of the most tantalizing mysteries in the history of our search for extraterrestrial intelligence. It arrived without warning on a summer night in 1977 and then vanished just as quickly. It was a brief, powerful burst of information from a silent patch of sky in the constellation of Sagittarius. It was a cosmic anomaly that has defied every attempt at explanation. Was it a message? Was it a fluke of nature? Or was it simply the universe playing a trick on a handful of hopeful scientists? We still do not know, and that is what makes this story so utterly compelling. The signal was not just a blip on a screen, it was a profound moment of possibility. It represented the very thing that astronomers and dreamers had been searching for. It was a potential sign that we are not alone in this vast dark universe. To understand the significance of what Jerry Amon saw, we need to appreciate how the Big Ear Telescope worked. It was, honestly, an ingenious design built on a budget. The telescope had two main components, a large, flat, tilting reflector and a smaller, curved, focusing reflector. Radio waves from space would bounce off the big, flat panel, hit the curved one, and then be funneled into a set of receivers. Now, because the telescope itself could not move side to side, it relied on the Earth's spin to bring the stars into its line of sight. Any given star or point in space would drift through the telescope's narrow beam for precisely 72 seconds. This was a crucial detail. This fixed observation window meant that any signal from deep space would have a very specific signature. As a celestial source entered the beam, its signal strength would gradually increase, reach its maximum intensity when it was in the center of the beam, then gradually fade away. The signal that Eamon found on the printout matched this golden signature perfectly. The sequence 6 EQWJ5 showed the intensity rising sharply from a background level of 1 or 2, peaking in the middle of the observation window, and then decreasing again. The letter E represented a signal strength of 14, Q was 26, and U was a remarkable 30. The shape of this intensity curve was exactly what you would expect from a compact, distant source being scanned by the telescope. When you find something as extraordinary as the WOW signal, the first rule of science is to try your hardest to prove it wrong. Before you can even begin to whisper the word aliens, you must exhaust every possible mundane explanation. The team at Ohio State University immediately became detectives, trying to debunk their own discovery. Their first and most obvious suspect was earthly interference. Could the signal have come from a ground-based transmitter? A more recent and widely publicized theory proposed in 2017 suggested the signal came from a pair of comets. The idea was that the comets were passing through the Big Ears field of view at the time, surrounded by vast clouds of hydrogen gas. This was an intriguing natural explanation, but it was quickly challenged by other astronomers. Critics pointed out that these specific comets were not in the correct position in the sky at the time of the signal. After ruling out sources on the ground, in the air, and in orbit, the investigators were left with only one conclusion. Based on all the available data, the signal appeared to have come from deep space, from somewhere beyond our solar system in the direction of Sagittarius. Every conventional, Earth-based explanation had been examined and had come up short. 
the signal stubbornly refused to fit into any known box. It was this process of elimination that transformed the wow signal from a curious anomaly into an enduring scientific mystery. With natural explanations struggling to fit the facts, scientists were forced to seriously consider the alternative that the signal was artificial. This is the interstellar beacon hypothesis. The idea is that an advanced extraterrestrial civilization might build a powerful transmitter, a beacon designed to announce its presence to the galaxy. Such a beacon would likely be aimed at regions of the sky with a high density of stars, like the galactic center, which is exactly where the big ear was looking. Its purpose would not be to start a conversation, which would take centuries, but simply to say, we are here. The wow. Signal fits the description of such a beacon remarkably well. Beyond its physical characteristics, the location of the signal on the radio dial was profoundly significant. The signal was detected at a frequency of approximately 1,420 megahertz, the hydrogen line. This specific frequency is naturally emitted by neutral hydrogen atoms, the most abundant element in existence. Scientists had long theorized that this frequency would be the perfect place for interstellar communication, the cosmic waterhole, a quiet spot on the radio spectrum where different species might gather to exchange information. The signal had all the hallmarks of a well-designed message, crafted to be easily found and identified as artificial by another technological species like ours. Of course, this hypothesis has one major glaring problem. Why was it only heard once? Perhaps the beacon sweeps the sky like a lighthouse, and we were just lucky to be in its path for a moment. Or maybe the source was on a moving spaceship or planet, which has since drifted out of alignment. The transient nature of the signal is the biggest mystery of all. The immediate aftermath of the discovery was a flurry of activity. In the weeks and months that followed, they repeatedly pointed the telescope back to that same patch of sky in Sagittarius. They found nothing. The celestial coordinates from which the signal had come remained stubbornly, frustratingly silent. As news of the discovery spread through the astronomical community, other, more powerful telescopes were brought into the hunt. Later, in the 1990s, Robert Gray used the even more powerful Very Large Array in New Mexico. He scanned the area for thousands of hours across more than 100 separate observing sessions. The legacy of the WOW signal is actively fueling the modern search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Projects like the Breakthrough Listen Initiative, a $100 million program, are built upon the foundation of hope that the WOW signal helped to lay. These modern searches use technology that is exponentially more powerful than the big ear, capable of scanning billions of radio channels simultaneously across vast swathes of the sky, increasing the chances of catching another fleeting signal. And so, the vigil continues. Around the world, right now, giant mechanical ears are tilted towards the heavens. They are listening to the symphony of the cosmos, sifting through the static, waiting patiently. They are waiting for the next wow moment, ready to finally answer the question that has haunted us since we first looked up at the glittering silent stars. The wow signal remains the one that got away, a cosmic ghost that continues to haunt and inspire the hunt. The story of the wow signal taps into one of the most profound questions we can ask ourselves. Are we alone? For millennia, Humanity has looked up at the stars and wondered if anyone is looking back. This question is woven into our myths, our religions, and our science. It speaks to a deep-seated need to understand our place in the grand cosmic scheme. The silence from the cosmos can feel immense and isolating. The story of the WOW Signal is ultimately not just about a mysterious radio wave from the constellation Sagittarius. It is also a story about us. The way we have reacted to it, studied it and mythologized it, holds up a mirror to our own hopes, fears and deepest curiosities as a species. Beyond the confines of radio observatories and scientific journals, the WOW signal has captured the public imagination like few other scientific mysteries. It has transcended its origins as a string of characters on a computer printout to become a cultural touchstone, a modern myth about contact with the unknown. The original printout, with its circled 6 EQUJ5 and scribbled WOW, is more than just a historical artifact. It is a symbol of a moment when the universe seemed to lean in and whisper a secret, 
only to pull back into silence before we could fully understand. The signal's legacy is not an answer, but a permanent, indelible question mark stamped upon the cosmos. It represents a boundary of our knowledge, reminding us that for all our powerful telescopes and sophisticated computers, the cosmos is still vast, mysterious, and capable of producing phenomena that can stump us for generations. We have journeyed back to a summer night in 1977. We have explored the intricate workings of the Big Ear Telescope, marveled at the signal's almost perfect characteristics, and followed the decades-long hunt for an explanation. Yet, after all this time, we are left standing in much the same place as the scientists were back then, in a state of profound and unresolved wonder. The WOW signal remains one of science's greatest unsolved cases. The reason for its enduring power as a mystery is simple. No explanation, whether natural or artificial, fits all the facts perfectly. This lack of a satisfying conclusion is precisely what makes the story so compelling. The signal is a cosmic outlier, a piece of data that refuses to fit into our established models of the universe. It exists in a fascinating gray area between the known and the unknown, between a statistical fluke and the most profound discovery in human history. It is a scientific ghost story, where the evidence is just tangible enough to be tantalizing, but too fleeting to provide any certainty. The signal's true identity may be lost to time, forever locked in that single, unrepeated moment of its arrival. And so, the enigma endures. But the search it inspired is more alive and vibrant than ever before. The true legacy of that 72-second anomaly is not the single piece of data it produced, but the generations of scientists, engineers, and dreamers it has motivated to keep listening. The WOW! Signal forces us to confront our own cosmic significance. It reminds us of our scale, inhabitants of a tiny planet orbiting a very average star in a quiet corner of one galaxy among billions. Yet it also serves as a powerful antidote to that cosmic loneliness, keeping alive the profound possibility that there are other minds out there, looking up at their own skies and wondering, just as we are.